Ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests and uh, dear part participants, uh, I welcome you all here uh, to have a discussion on uh, to explore the role of uh, financial inclusion in food processing uh, sector. Uh, in this session, uh, we'll look uh, at the significance of financial uh, empowerment in uh, food uh, Indian food processing uh, industry. Uh, the session will uh, basically cover how financial inclusion can lead to entrepreneurship, uh, innovations, uh, economic development and uh, rural growth. Uh, uh, we will also explore some challenges uh, and uh, the solutions uh, that the industry is facing in terms of access of uh, finance and uh, financial literacy. Uh, we will discuss uh, some uh, invest, uh, investment and funding opportunities uh, from uh, bootstrapping and uh, uh, government schemes uh, that are available uh, for the industry and we will discuss how uh, strategic uh, financial management plays a vital role in uh, growth of uh, both startups and uh, established uh, enterprises. Uh, so uh, let me start from introducing our uh, esteemed uh, panelists. Uh, first and foremost, uh, it is uh, my honor to introduce Mr. Shanu, uh, Shantanu Panse. Uh, he is the Chief uh, General Manager. Uh, at SBI and uh, he is overseeing agriculture and uh, government sponsored schemes. Uh, with uh, an impressive uh, year, uh, 37 years of career, Mr. Panse has uh, uh, vast experience in financial domain and uh, including SME uh, credit and uh, agriculture credit. Uh, his team has achieved uh, notable recognition in 2023 uh, and was named the best uh, performing uh, uh, best performing bank in equity infra fund and excelled at best campaign uh, by the Ministry of uh, which was conducted by the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, Farmer Welfare. Uh, Mr. Shabnu sir, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vivek Vahi, uh, he is the Executive Director at Central Bank of India, who brings a uh, wealth of experience to our uh, esteemed uh, discussion panel. Uh, his uh, remarkable journey includes uh, leadership at, uh, as a Zonal Manager, Treasury Head and uh, Field General Manager. Uh, he, uh, he served as a uh, Zonal Manager for Bank of India and uh, he is currently uh, looking after uh, Mumbai uh, South Zone and uh, his career has uh, obviously is a valuable asset to this uh, uh, panel. So please see Mr. Vivek Pai. Uh, uh, I am pleased to introduce Mr. Sankhir S, uh, Head of uh, Thai Food Networks, uh, the visionary founder of Scandalous Foods and he is known for his unique approach for uh, post wheel Indian sweets. Please repeat the name, Scandalous Foods? Yes. <laughs> we, don't, we don't sell any name of Scandalous <laughs> We sell sweets for the name itself. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's, it's <laughs> Uh, so, um, he was uh, previously the owner of uh, Urban Spice uh, and he made it into one of the largest uh, OHH uh, out-of-home business uh, uh, His uh, vision for uh, food sector is, uh, he basically embraces technology. So, uh, his uh, approach is uh, quite vital for this uh, esteemed panel. And uh, uh, please allow me to introduce Mr. Vimal Pan. Uh, he is uh, a professor at uh, Department of Food Business uh, Management and Enterprise Development uh, at uh, Niftim. Uh, his area of uh, his area intersects with uh, financial management and uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, he has been an instrumental uh, in establishing a business incubator at, as a sector A company at Niftim, and the founder and his founding chief executive officer of Niftim. So please, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, 
and our session today will be moderated by uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Samira Sora. Uh, she has over uh, 20 years of uh, uh, experience in uh, government civil uh, services and uh, she has been a part of uh, Intelligence Bureau, uh, Ministry of Finance, uh, External Affairs and has been in uh, development working group of uh, G20. And uh, she has also worked as uh, worked with the PM Summit's uh, uh, BRICS and G20. So uh, I'll ask uh, um, Samira ma'am to uh, join the dialogue. Uh, without uh, further ado, uh, we can uh, start the session. And, uh, Very warm welcome. Very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, uh, this is a very important initiative uh, for the Ministry of Food Processing Industries, along with our knowledge partners and uh, uh, along with Kiki and North and Young and West India. So, on behalf of the Government of India and all the partners, we welcome you. Uh, this is a very esteemed panel uh, with speakers and panelists. Uh, uh, far exceeding the experience, not only number of years, but quality and content uh, in uh, banking operations, as well as uh, in trying to develop entrepreneurship, because we have a very complex and diversified country. So, uh, banking, I've had uh, experience because I'm a banker's daughter. So, I grew up all over the country and landed up finally in Bombay. So, my father was also in his way. So uh, with uh, this, uh, so with this very warm welcome, I call upon you to so please uh, share your perspective with respect to the industry, especially in the context of the food processing industry, and uh, your insights, please. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to all, and good afternoon to the esteemed panel. I mean, to quite a variety of, uh, I mean, experience you brought together with youth as well as some, some kind of white hairs. So, great. I mean, if you see uh, the food processing industry per se, and the, uh, we are more looking from the financial inclusion uh, side of it, not the very big kind of things. Roughly, we have, I mean, out of 142 crore people, I mean, young demography is almost 100 crores and it's going to grow further. So, I'm, I'm, I mean, we can look at the supply side and demand side both. So, one, on, on the demand side, with such a huge population, which is young demography, the, the demand for food, demand for even, uh, I mean, different kinds of foods, and right from basics to fortifiers, to the vitamins, and, and uh, I mean, uh, uh, I can name at least 15, 20 category. That's going to grow. This is number one. Number two, with the additional income generation, uh, which are at the hands of this young demography, the demand for food and the food processing industry, and particularly in the context of micro or the financial inclusion, is absolutely uh, running away. I mean, if you see the contribution of food processing in the total GVA is, is increasing and ever increasing. I don't think that there is there is any challenge uh, for it. I mean, you see, uh, you see the dairy products, you see the, the kind of millets we are now processing, and, and all across the Annapurna we have been, we have seen presence of millets, and so on. So on the demand side, I don't see uh, any downturn or anything. We, it's going to increase. That's for sure. India presents a very unique. Uh, I mean, the position that we are the biggest producers and we are the biggest consumers also. <coughs> so we are a self-sufficient economy as such. Because on one hand, we have got the biggest demand uh, being the largest population and out of that population, the youngest population of 100 crores and our average is going to be either stagnant or maybe go down two, three years perhaps in the next decade and then it will plateau and uh, go up. So, on the demand side, uh, I mean, I don't see any challenge. On the supply side, uh, you name it, we have majority of women-led enterprises in the financial inclusion space of the 
or the uh, smaller enterprises, in fact, the homegrown enterprises kind of. Uh, there is no dearth of talent also. Uh, in, in, I, I have seen some of the lectures by one of the uh, eminent person who's, who tells us about the micro entrepreneurship skills which the Indians possess. I mean, uh, uh, people who are selling the idlis in the morning, uh, yeah. they are not English speaking people. Yeah. They are working in the food or food processing industry. But if you see, their entire supply chain, without any English or any academics, they know how to manage their supply chain. In the afternoon, they sell some different food. And their entire supply chain is different. In the evening, they sell entirely different kind of thing. You go to church gas station, you will find the same person selling three different class of products, morning, afternoon, evening. And their entire supply chain it is, is well managed without any documentary evidence of it. So uh, we have had enough people who are actually know the skills of being micro entrepreneurship. Second thing is uh, there are several policy supports which are given. Maybe I will come to that later. But uh, right from the demand side to the supply side to the availability of infrastructure, I think the country at the cusp of uh, disruption as far as the uh, food and food processing sector is concerned and particularly from the financial inclusion side because all across country we have got small entrepreneurs who are not officially maybe recognized but the country is going to see revolution. Uh, I, will, I will touch base some more points uh, subsequently. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, As uh, rightly pointed out by my fellow colleague, also a banker, and uh, uh, being a banker's daughter, we have been given some comfort by the moderator also. So I would, uh, I would uh, really uh, say that uh, yes, food processing has been, in a way, I would say, uh, it has an immense potential in the country, but unfortunately, the Identifying the potential and giving weightage to the sector has only been done in the last very, very recent past. That is the, that is the flip side. We being uh, a big agrarian economy, we being a big uh, agriculture belt, we being biggest producers of so many types of food grains. But unfortunately, the processing part was Either to missing in this country as compared to other parts of, say, more developed parts of Europe or even America. But they are the most as I will tell. So uh, processing has been given a due weightage with a lot of emphasis, and more than emphasis, it requires more awareness. So. Once awareness has developed among the common man, among an entrepreneur, I'm sure uh, our uh, other uh, speakers on the dais will also uh, throw some light on that. See, awareness is the most major part of this journey. As far as backward leakages, he has rightly said, we are a huge potential. Forward leakages, we have a huge potential, huge consumption economy. <laughs> But the missing link is awareness. So I am sure we are all here as an effort uh, to bring more awareness to the, uh, to the public in general that look, food processing has a big potential here. Food, food processing uh, is, is a, I would say, it, it's a low hanging fruit in this country. And a lot of good things have been done. Uh, as far as enablers uh, from the government of India, a lot of schemes have been uh, have started. But let me tell you, even those schemes are yet to reach to the last mile. The reasons are maybe teething troubles, maybe initial troubles, or maybe curves, maybe awareness again. So uh, uh, it's a good thing that uh, we are here to really identify that big potential in this industry and also to take it forward 
so that once see already the millet name is a, is a now household name which was uh, nobody was aware of five years back people used to uh, think below their uh, i would say below dignity, below dignity to, to say bajra roti right see bajra is also millet so there are so many types of millet so now awareness this is only because of awareness uh people have started uh, realizing the benefits so with these initial remarks uh, and uh, later on uh, i definitely will touch upon the banking angle also to this uh, big thing uh sanket uh, i'd like to know your remarks hello ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for giving us this opportunity uh, it's so good to see such a huge audience post lunch ho bab log yahan pe sone to nahi aaye ya bankers ko dekhe loan mangne aaye so uh, so uh, i've spent 12 plus years in the food service industry now i founded urban spice in 2011 at the age of 24 and uh, grew to make it one of the bigger food oh companies uh, food oh is out of home services when you eat food outside your home but not at a restaurant and at an exhibition like Pravati Maidan or an event or matches or theatres that is out of home services uh, I have sold 9 million plus meals with Urban Spice exhibit Urban Spice in 2019 and then currently I am founding Scandalous Foods which also makes food and not MMS Scandalous uh, like so but how come the name is chosen as Scandalous? so, so, so uh, since you asked Scandalous is actually an abbreviation for why us Scandalous actually is an abbreviation for why food processing its standardization convenience affordability nil wastage dependence on skill level accessibility lightning fast delicious food so that's what scandalous is <laughs> so anyways so uh, and you know as an as an entrepreneur and a firm believer of the food processing i i think that you know what it did to india in the 1980s food processing could do to india in the 2020s and the 30s it could create the next 1 crore jobs if all of us came together and under the guidance of you know js ma'am you know we all could like really grow the industry you know many fold uh, you know india is a trillion dollar food industry out of which the food service industry is just a 65 million dollar industry why you know if you go to china it's a 1.5 trillion dollar food industry and the food service is 650 billion dollars so you know it's almost 50% is food service ours only 6.5% is food service so imagine the potential that we guys are sitting on you know we guys are sitting on i mean you know even though we are not, are not in the ev space we still sitting on a gold mine so you know there's a huge potential to grow this and for the food service to grow food processing needs to be firmly at the back end of food service mm -hmm. right so there is a huge potential for food processing to grow uh, us uh, 65% of the products sold are are processed you know so product economy india only 2% of the products sold are processed baki sab commoditized hai so india has to move from commodities to products and for that the food processing industry i think is going to take humongous strides and uh, you know as an entrepreneur uh, you know i am a firm believer in in positivity and collaboration so yeah we are sitting on a huge opportunity and and uh, people like vimal are obviously going to producing the future of tomorrow through nifty and we hope that you know we, we will see a huge growth in this industry thanks a lot sakit and uh, so i'm very pleased to hear the full form of scandalous books <laughs> so with that the last level we to share this books Yeah. Okay, so uh, I have also some common thread that I have been a banker for 10 years uh, prior to <coughs> joining Nikken. So I worked with uh, mainly micro and small enterprises. So as a banker, you know, uh, say a banker in a branch, you know, normally deals with all kinds of uh, traders, uh, businessmen, according to all industries. So uh, you can't say like because when I was in the bank, I was dealing with. people who are into small businesses traditional businesses now at nifty we have established a section 8 company as a business incubator where we are dealing with startups who are into innovation technology in any sphere of food technology so 
mostly in the bank, like it was more of traditional businesses seeking debt, and here the people are seeking equity. Uh, they want investment also. So, as like all my fellow panelists said, macro level things are good. Like the industry, food processing, food is like uh, an evergreen thing, and it looks like uh, at the macro level, demand is not going to be an issue. But yes, and for for startups and innovation, like. Because the sustainability thing has come uh, into picture in a very big way. So right from food sourcing to food packaging to you know disposal of waste. So I think for startups there are a lot of avenues for innovation, and I think equity uh, or people who are into uh, like normally these there are uh, green finance opportunities available since food sector has a healthy demand. So I think any startup who wishes to come into the, any sustainability angle should get a good response. And as far as the traditional businesses and debt is concerned, I think of my fellow banker, the government is making all sorts of steps. I think our uh, this ministry has also launched one uh, scheme, PF, uh, PMFM, which primarily is giving uh, capital subsidy for investment in food processing. So yeah, I think uh, both for the startups as well as for traditional businesses, uh, there are good opportunities below. Thank you so much, uh, Sanket, I have a question for you. Uh, what is the uh, your experience range in this industry has uh, been over a couple of years? So you started with Urban Spice, right? right? Uh, then I believe you uh, went on to uh, scandalous foods, etc. And you, in meanwhile, you also had this Thai food stuff. Correct. So. Uh, I would also like you to um, explain to all of us as to what exactly are you doing with Typhoon's network and how would uh, other young entrepreneurs in this sector would benefit from it. And any type of difference in the uh, experience you have had over this couple of years, any changes you have noticed sure. which you would like to share with us? Absolutely. So, uh, I'll break uh, Samira ji's question into two parts. So, first I will talk about uh, TIE. Uh, TIE Mumbai is an entrepreneurial organization. It's an NPO which basically fosters entrepreneurship. It uh, stands for the Indus Entrepreneurs. It was born in the Silicon Valley some decades ago and then it has chapters all over the world. India has about 22 chapters out of which I think Thai Mumbai, Thai Delhi are further more active ones. Uh, <clears throat> so, in 2020, I co-founded Thai Food Network along with Thai Mumbai, which is a special interest group on food, uh, because uh, I had seen in the last 10 years of journey was that, you know, when we were, when, you know, I started at the age of 23, 24, there were not enough people to guide us on what, you know, what to do, what not to do, because I've learned in entrepreneurship, it's important to know what not to do more than what to do because wo what to do to you figure out karna. but what not to do ka guidance mil jaye to aapke bahut paise aur time bach jate so uh, you know the typhoon network was created with the idea of uh, you know helping aspiring food entrepreneurs and uh, as uh, you know like uh, young food entrepreneurs uh, to get guidance funding etc from established food entrepreneurs so that's the whole, that was the whole idea with which typhoon network was created and luckily the whole uh, industry came in support of it. So everyone from Chef Sanjeev Kapoor to Chef Arpal to Jaydeep of Rebel to Sagar of Aumomo to Jaspal of Everstone to, I mean, to Raga of Chai. Everyone's like, you know, come on our, for our events, you know, they've, uh, and directly, indirectly, we've touched upon 7,000 plus food entrepreneurs through this initiatives in the last three years. And, uh, yeah, I mean, so that is more about Thai Food Network. Uh, talking about the changes I've seen in in the food pr processing and food service. So in fact, uh, uh, when I uh, started Urban Spice back in 2011, I myself started as a fresh food player, right? I mean, uh, when most pe most of us join food service, uh, most of us don't even know that you know, food back end is There is something called frozen food, there is retort, there is freeze drying and all of that. I mean, there is not enough awareness about it. So, I mean, you know, of course, there is a lot more upskilling that's required at the, the grassroots level. When the child is hotel management college, he thinks that he is working in the hotel, or he will work in the front desk, or he will become a chef. So, 
उसको फूड प्रोसेसिंग का तो वहाँ पे नॉलेज ही नहीं मिलता है कि यू नो ही कुड गेट इन टू फूड फैक्ट्रीज एक्सेप्ट सो आई थिंक दैट ऑब्वियसली नीड्स मोर चेंजेस सो यू नो आई स्टार्ट एज अ फ्रेश फूड प्लेयर आई वॉट वॉज द टर्निंग पॉइंट इन माई लाइफ वॉज इन ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन आई वॉज इंटरेस्टिंग इन डूइंग इन इंडिया श्रीलंका मैच जिसमें इंडिया वॉट हंड्रेड ऑल आउट एंड एंड एज यू नो इन इंडिया क्रिकेट इज एन इमोशन सेकेंड हाफ में स्टेडियम पूरा खाली हो गया उस दिन मैंने छः सौ किलो चावल फेंका सो आई रियलाइज दैट यू नो इन अ कंट्री लाइक इंडिया वेस्टिंग फूड इज क्रिमिनल वेस्टेज एंड दैट्स वेन यू नो आई वेंट टू माई शोर आई स्पेंड मोर देन अ वीक दर एट सी एफ टी आई आई लोन फूड बैक इन डेज दैट्स वेन वी बैक इन डेड आर देसी चाइनीज लाइन एंड दैट्स वेन ओवन स्पाइस ग्रू टू यू नो स्केल टू सेलिंग नाइन मिलियन प्लस मील्स एक्सेट्रा डन लाइक लॉट बी टू बी वर्क एंड एंड आई रियलाइज दैट यू नो हाउ फूड प्रोसेसिंग एंड मी स्केल ऑफ एज एन ऑन्टरप्रिनर एंड इमेंशली यू नो सेल माई कम so uh, <clears throat> obviously so then so i was very clear that in my next stint i wanted to help the industry solve the problem of consistency of food and dependence on skill labor right so i believe that in our industry the bigger problem than getting capital is uh, you know solving the problem of consistency of food and dependence on skill labor capital to the source name on the right they have in plenty and they distribute also in at the right time so uh, you know i've seen these changes over the over the years In fact, even before the pandemic, like some great food chains uh, used to look upon frozen food as taboo or retail food as taboo. Today, the industry has accepted frozen as the new fresh. So, I would say the end consumer, India, still is 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 at a infant stage to accept food, processed food, because with processed food we think preservatives there. So, obviously, a lot more education is required in understanding that processed food may preservatives nahi hote. I mean, there are processed food. But most processed processed food could be clean label, and which is clean label by the way. So you know, like the food we make, there are no preservatives at all. You know, blast freezing basically uh, ceases uh, uh, micro, uh, I mean, you know, anti bacterial activity ceases to exist, and that's how it works. So there are so many such technologies. So now the restaurant industry has started accepting frozen as the new fresh. So that we've seen like a huge change, and eventually it will trickle down to consumers like us. लाइक like, आप आप लोगों ने भी देखा होगा कि बिफोर द पैंडमिक हमारे घर पे मैक्सिमम फ्रोजन फ्राइज आते थे नाउ यू वुड हैव सीन यू नो पीपल आर कीपिंग फ्रोजन कबाब्स एंड यू नो सो मेनी अदर थिंग्स एट होम सो थिंग्स आर इवॉल्विंग एंड ऑफ कोर्स यू नो एज द एज द इंडिया टू यू नो विच इज पीपल वर्किंग फॉर आस दे बिकम मोर एंड मोर एक्सपेंसिव वी विल ऑल्सो लाइक द यू एस एंड द यूरोप टेक टू फ्रोजन फूड राइट टूडे आई मीन यू नो देर इज हेल्प वेरी ईजिली अवेलेबल टू आस इन इंडिया एंड एट स्टिल रीजनेबल रेट्स Over the next five, six, seven years, that's not going to happen. So, if you're coming and cooking at your house at like seven thousand rupees, we'll probably charge you thirty-five thousand rupees after seven years, and that's when keeping frozen biryanis and all at home, like how the US, Europe, and Middle East keeps, will make sense. And you know, this industry will probably go. I don't know, grow. I think hundred, hundred and twenty x more. So we've seen tremendous changes in the last few years. Thanks for that. Was all quite interesting, Sankey. Shankar ji, I would like to uh, know as per as far as the credit outflow goes for SPI, uh, what percentage would you uh, say actually goes to the industries or specifically to towards the food processing industries? And uh, what do you perceive as the likely or what do you feel are the pitfalls or the challenges of lending to this sector at the moment? Yeah, if you allow me. To answer in detail, I would love that. Yeah, please. Thank you. In fact, I want to make other points uh, before I actually uh, come to the question. Is that we as Bharat must understand uh, that we have been actually uh, looking at our country, and uh, you just Google it and you will find uh, many new startups in in food, just like. Uh, what scandal is this? Okay. But we have had our indigenous, uh, I mean, Parathiwali Gali, is it not? In in New Delhi, this is Parathiwali Gali. It's not on Google. But everyone, if, if, if Delhi, I will go to Parathiwali Gali and eat, eat that food. So we all had uh, that kind of spots or the indigenous food suppliers, be it Mumbai, be it Chennai, be it Chennai, be it Chennai, be it Mangalore, everywhere. Now, as a country, if you see um, the Chinese model and Indian model, what do we do with this youth? Because we got demand and we got youth. 
and we got, uh, I mean, uh, all the infrastructure in place, the banks are also doing, uh, playing their role. Okay, I would request to, to close the please doors. Please close the doors. Yeah. Close the doors, please. Why I am saying this is, the banks today in India are so well placed and the government initiatives which have uh, been taken in last maybe five, six, seven years are just superb and they are all interwoven. I mean, various ministries are taking various uh, uh, initiatives and they are all interwoven uh, and as a result, I mean, the youth of this country is, is I mean, the banks are trying to promote the base level micro entrepreneurship at, at various uh, points. Now, why this is required is, ma'am, uh, I mean, uh, the farmer in this country, and why I am referring again to farmer is that the origin of food comes from farmer. And in a broader perspective, the farmer which produces farming produce, the fish, uh, uh, the, the, I mean, the meat also, everything comes under a broader picture of uh, agriculture and then food because everything is processed and consumed by humans. So if you see uh, a simple chili which is sold at green chili at 23 rupees and red chili at 250 rupees, so the farmer takes highest risk but is at the lowest uh, end of the rewards. This is because the producer, we are not able to make the producer as part of supply chain. Simple chili flakes of this size, you can Amazon it or, or or uh, any any side, this one bottle will cost you around 400 rupees chili flakes, whereas uh, the, the green chili or red chili is is that. So how do we make uh, the farmer or the producer of food a part of supply chain? That's the larger question. I will just leave because uh, if we, if we do this, then we had the answer because the young demography of this country actually needs work and right direction and credit uh, support, policy support. The, the second thing, as rightly said by Mr. Wahi, is the awareness. And I will just touch base, madam, how uh, banks are look, looking at several schemes. Uh, he said PMFME, but there are three schemes by the food processing uh, ministry, basically, PMKS, Isan Sampada Yojana, basically which is more of infrastructural development. Uh, that's a fundamental thing. PMFME works at the entrepreneurial level, the individual. So uh, these are two basic uh, things which the uh, food processing uh, ministry has done. And if you see uh, all the kind of pro processing about the agri-infra fund, we, madam, we have done in three years 10,000 sanctions of agri-infra fund in the country and we have almost 25% of the country's market share. So why agri infra fund again helps producing uh, or helps in uh, food processing is, as I said, simple chili, uh, which is just sold, is dried, processed, and then sold. The value to the farmer is just 2x, 3x, 4x. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the scheme is uh, 1 lakh crore policy support, in three years, I don't think we have even consumed 35% of the total money given by the government. And despite uh, we doing, and all, all the banks uh, would have done somewhere around 45-50,000 sign numbers uh, of unit sanction. But considering the kind of opportunities we have, we have tremendous scope. And this will actually multiply the income not only of the uh, base level producer, but the ultimate value chain gets enriched not only inbound in the country, but outside also. <laughs> then we have got the animals the infrastructure fund, again helping or going into food chain. I mean, although I am referring ma'am to the different schemes, but ultimately they are part of the food chain only. So agri-infra fund, AHIDF, uh, uh, then there are CGT MSA schemes, uh, all, all kinds of these micro-enterprises in the financial inclusion space actually are trade guaranteed, so we don't need the, the collaterals as such. Uh, I mean, you go to Mudra, under Mudra also you can fund the food processing units, uh, small units across the country. Then you have got Stand Up India. Stand Up India is also an amazing scheme and I have seen uh, last year 20,000 youth of this country uh, I will Stand Up India from SBA and uh, almost 
maybe 50,000 Stand Up India loan given last year, last financial year. So all this is majorly coming into either either processing uh, or I mean the agriculture produce or the fish or the food or the fruit. And when we actually are wasting one and a half trillion rupees worth food, fruit, vegetable every year, which our neighbors also don't produce. It's food which is wasted, one and a half trillion. So as a bank, I want to tell you, and on behalf of other bankers also, we we are working with the ministries very, very closely in all these schemes. In fact, the, the street vendor scheme also promotes modern part, partially the food, because there are hundreds and thousands of food vendors uh, who are selling food uh, on the on the road. And if you allow me further two, three minutes, uh, I mean, there are delegates coming from outside the country also. Let me tell you, when they started with uh, Pradhan Mantri Swanidhi scheme or PM Swanidhi, nobody in the country actually understood what is the intent of the government. Today, more than 0 0.6 crores uh, Indians have been converted from a, uh, I, I mean, Sahukar led 25-30% uh, interest rate economy uh, or even a money lender who would go to a mandi in the morning and give 900 rupees and in the evening collect 1000 rupees is gone. 0 0.6 crore people are now enjoying government of India credit guaranteed scheme of PM Sonidhi at 5% 5 5 interest. That's a tremendous thing which has happened. And majority of the street vendors are working in the food sector, madam. We have given 25 lakh out in the across the country. And why I am saying that is a conversion from unorganized sector to organized banking. And what is happening is that from tranche one 10,000, majority of them have moved to tranche two and now tranche three of 50,000. So we are actually promoting micro entrepreneurship as a part of financial inclusion. And these all street vendors are also digitally uh, onboarded man. So we have a terrific thing going on in this country, all across. I mean, you take PMKSY, you take PMFME. PMFME also, as a bank, we do 22-23% market share in, in the units across finance for last five, I mean, maybe five, six, eight years uh, since when the scheme is launched. So, uh, I mean, the, the, all the ministries are actually doing great. Uh, if for the availability of credit, there is a Jansama platform which is already live. And there are 13 schemes. Uh, even PMFM is live on that. Uh, we started in 2017 at psbloans. Uh, psb in 59minutes.com. Now it is OPL, funded by the banks itself. And it's a platform which is uh, owned by the government of India and uh, I mean DFS driven. Madam, we have a thousands and thousands of applications done digitally because digital, digital is the only way to upscale what we do. And it's a wonderful platform. We have got 13 government schemes live on that platform and many, many more to come. RBI Innovation Hub is also coming. Why, are referring, why I'm referring to this digital initiative is that if we have to reach deep down south, deep down northeast, uh, because in, in case of northeast, uh, we have little knowledge about Northeast, but Northeast has got five neighbors and lot of experts in the agriculture, food, food processing uh, sector, which is happening. Uh, so, all in all, I mean, uh, the banks and the guidance of the various various ministries and the food processing is one of the major thing. Uh, I, as a banker, and on behalf of the bank, I can tell we are actually looking at a wonderful picture of. Uh, disruption which is going to happen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, it was very heartening to hear your views uh, because working across uh, many ministries, I've been in and out of uh, various schemes and uh, seen the inception, but uh, not uh, staying there long enough to see what happens thereafter. So, uh, it's heartening to know and uh, the success of PM Swanidhi, of course, because uh, uh, government policy makers can, uh, you know, can think and design uh, to an extent, but uh, as uh, the stakeholders and participation, aplo ki participation or entrepreneurs ki jo courage hoti hai to try it out, so that is a big leap forward. 
uh, in terms of convincing the vendors to go for digitization or even uh, we saw in uh, other uh, sectors with uh, PM Vishkarma. So PM Swanidhi has helped to in fact uh, start PM Vishkarma because the same digital uh, lines has worked. Here. And the indigenous technology which is so cheap, I mean not all the people know English language but the sound box which has come is terrific. I mean the person is doing some Bhairpuri wala banara and it around as expert has been built here. Something an innovation of this country. This, I mean, these are very simple things, but the West doesn't have this one. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> West would be very. <laughs> they would go into panic mode <laughs> if faced with a country like us. So, uh, with this, uh, sir, I would like to come to Vinay, sir. So please share your views. See, first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll start from the uh, first question which you asked him that what amount of learning that is a good question and you will be, I would say, if a public sector bank, not even 1% lending is going to do this. That is the reality check. And I am sure Sanket may also agree to me. The reason is not that we are not uh, averse or we are not uh, that keen. The reason is that uh, the platform or the foundation or the skill levels are missing among the entrepreneurs. Firstly, it has start from, as he has rightly said, firstly it has to start from the former stage the peasant stage. So that is that is somewhere the link is missing. Forget about big uh, big uh, players in the country like uh, Pepsi and uh, or uh, other uh, big names. Forget about that. Primarily food processing has to come from either micro or small. Not even medium enterprise. Primarily, it has to come from micro and small. It is yet to take off in a big way. The reason, I have already told, the reason is there is no government schemes are there. Two, three, just two, three government schemes are there. They have done a good work. But the real push from the skill development side is not there among the entrepreneurs. Among the farmers who can turn to the entrepreneurs. That is where somewhere the link is missing. And therefore the banks also give lending only to the already structured schemes. Banks are not financing to startups. Few banks maybe SBI would be doing some startups or one or two banks, overall banks are not doing. Banks are not doing seed funding in a big way. Small call scheme wise we are doing this scheme also as some seed funding but in a very small way. Banks are not doing seed funding, banks are not doing startup. In general also. So when it comes to food processing, again situation is same. So now what has to be done to really take off this, as we already said, uh, even the meat part, we have a biggest, uh, one of the biggest coastal lines in the world. There also we are, we are missing on the links. I, I happened to be, for three years I happened to be in France and I was, uh, of course, being a non-vegetarian, I was using fish and all those frozen foods which you are saying. And I was, uh, I stopped eating when I saw that the fish has been imported from Bangladesh and it was imported around six months back. That was the lack of awareness. Then I was, I confronted some real fish eating guys. They said, no, no, it's perfectly fine. It's like this, it's like this. A lot of uh, things they explained that uh, you, you, you tend to be. Otherwise, this, this sort of real, uh, I would say, uh, culture has not crept into the grassroots level for food processing. 
this is the main hindrance and banks are also uh, banks want to do it but banks are also facing challenges as far as the real i would say uh, uh, skill development from the other side so uh, awareness wa was one thing second thing is technical assistance lot of work has to be done i'm sure ma'am will be working on it technical assistance again okay, that and skill development is the same thing other thing is that we are still treating food processing industry ma'am almost at par with any other micro or small almost at par leave aside two three uh, specialized schemes but still as far as micro and small is concerned we are almost treating it as par whereas the case in a country like india it should have been different now having said that and having also said that lot of emphasis yes sbi uh, we as a banker we have done good amount of work we have we have financed lot of enterprises we have also financed lot of already established uh, medium or very few small but the crux lies in when we really start financing the micro part where the finance is <coughs> say from say from 1 lakh to 1 crore that's all not more than that if we go uh, you know he has given a right example of those chili and uh, chili flakes uh, we have we have uh, i have a very big uh, uh oh. borrower I, i would not name this in here in the interest of privacy he, he is selling that that shishi of uh, red chili is to japan in 4000 rupees or to talk of 400 <coughs> and the procurement and everything is same his farmers are okay with that because he is very prompt in giving them payments he is very prompt in taking care of them also but the farmers are yet to realize that much bigger potential lies there which we are not aware so sgs have done a good work here i would say lot some push is required at that side also for as far as food processing is concerned but overall the contribution of bank finance to this sector is still not that sufficient what it should have been in a country like ours this is what it's so it's not even priority sector no no it's priority sector priority up sector. to certain uh, scales scale. priority sector is okay ma'am priority sector there are thousand things but the thing is that uh, if the guy is in stress we are not able to restructure it if the guy is it uh, at the initial stage we don't want to finance it because of this uh, skill development so those sort of don't those sort of enablers have are yet to come in a big way they are there but they are in bits and pieces thank you so much sir this has been a very informative discussion i would like to ask bimal ji as uh, not only a prior banker but a present researcher and uh, a spear heading left him to give his views and perspective and reactions to the remarks he being on the both sides sir being a banker also and being a yeah i'll give you just one practical uh, example like uh, there are a lot of my friends who are ex bankers so if you ask them ki bhai koi aaya aapse uske pass ko proposal hai and with you he played to them so kya hota bank mein Like I'm not talking about people who are running, say, flagship branches or who are dealing with corporates. Now, but they are trade specialists. If you go to say tier two, tier three cities, especially in and those rural belts and all those, so there are uh, people who are say uh, who are dealing with the liability side, you know, the like uh, accounts, insurance. Like they become say a branch manager. Okay. So in the public sector, what happens? The branch manager has the power. So normally they won't understand. They themselves won't understand finances properly. So what their uh, answer is? That okay, if you give me this mortgage, like if my loan is secured, I'll give. Otherwise, uh, like no. So primarily now the government said that okay, uh, because there are two hurdles. If you want a loan, 
There are two hurdles in the public sector bank. One, the bank will ask for collateral. Second, the bank will ask for personal loan. <coughs> now, if I am a new businessman, new idea, I neither have collateral <coughs> and nor I can arrange a personal And the government said, okay, you, they came up with a CGT MSE scheme, it guaranteed us for micro and small enterprises. So they said, okay, if you don't give personal guarantee, you don't give collateral, we'll give you money. But you have to pay some uh, 1 to 1.5% 1 of the total outstanding amount as an annual charge. Okay. And like if we, so if the bank is say funding 100 units, so they expect that if say 10 or 20 fail, so the, the amount that is collected to that charge from all those 100, it's like a group insurance, right? So I was in the banking sector when the scheme was launched. So first, in the initial years, like there was rampant credit, you know, anyone coming like banker thought, oh, yeah, I am very secure. If the bank, if the loan fails, a CGT MSE will pay. So yeah, anybody who's coming, you can give the loan. But in later years, like it turned out to be the numbers uh, came out to be like uh, NPA levels sharply rose up, and it uh, the reckless credit sort of a thing. So and then CGTMC said, okay, no, no, we are not going to give you 100%. They reduced it, uh, like say, to I think now it's 65% as I understand. So what I'm saying is, so the primary, uh, primarily one issue is that uh, bankers, uh, you know, they still, they those who ha have, don't have that uh, finance background or those who are, who are brought into risk management, they will mostly judge or process a proposal based on how secure it is. One another thing I wanted to point out is like uh, we at Niftin uh, through our incubation center we are working on some entrepreneurship based projects with FPOs uh, since uh, in Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh. So now as we were saying you know the farmer has to be in the value chain. So people have coconut, chilies, mangoes, Obviously, they say, no, what do we do with this? They say, okay, we are going to work, 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 but we are going to work, we are going to work. So, what do you think? If you, if you tell, mostly like, any of them would be literate. So, if you join them with the bank, you will tell them, so, the bank will say, okay, DPR will not be clear. DPR, I mean, first of all, they won't understand DPR. Then, they will go to a charter. अब चार्टर टाउन इनको बैंक वाले बोलेगा कि अच्छे इसमें डीएससीआर होना चाहिए फोर टू फाइव ठीक है तो ही लोन पास होगा तो इसका मतलब ये कि मतलब डीएससीआर मीन्स लाइक योर अर्निंग शुड बी फाइव टाइम्स ऑफ योर लाइफ तो वो उस हिसाब से यू ड्रॉ द डॉक्यूमेंट्स अकॉर्डिंगली ऑल द प्रोजेक्शंस so if you ask, as a banker, if you ask that person, what, the, what is your cash flow projection for the next year? He says, no, I don't know. See, you would have given it. So obviously now, next year, like term loan, if you have given term loan, uh, the money goes to the vendor, he will supply the equipment and whatnot. But your cash credit limit, you know, the, the working capital limit, which comes or which is calculated based on how much you want to sell the next year. Now, all that is, uh, you know, manipulated or the, the the entrepreneur or the small businessman doesn't know. So there is like, what I'm saying is, financial Ill illiteracy is on one hand. And then, uh, like I said, for FPOs, uh, one intervention I really found good was uh, like in this 10,000 FPO scheme that uh, even the Prime Minister was talking about in the morning. So now the, the government has realized that if we just ask them these FPOs to you know, make a business, go to the bank, take money and uh, go it, it won't be possible. So what they have said is they have now uh, come up with uh, an idea that there should be a CBPO, which is a mediator in between, cluster based business organization. So it's the job of the CBPO to you know make the business plan to uh, give them access to the bank facility to educate them about you know what is required from them as uh, from business both on a financial and management point of view. So my take is uh, what I'm experiencing is normally even like people who are very well educated, like say a, a startup, like they will know a lot about what their product is, technology, everything. But if you ask them finances, like 
Because as you would have seen, most of the startups fail due to you know, cash flow mismanagement. Because like operating, investing, financing of both, all three functions are there and there does happen. Uh, you are not, your pockets are not too deep to you know, uh, recruit a financially, you know, a staff or you know, an expert in your so you know, we'll normally visit your CA say once in two, three months and they take his advice. So for the grassroots level, FPOs, as I said, like CBBO is now how, what success it gets is yet to be seen, but it looks like a step in the right direction. But yeah, uh, food processing, as I said, as I also said, uh, banks are not doing startups. Uh, so not only food processing, but in any field, I think banks will hesitate to on the startups, primarily because the risk is very high and the uh, failure rate of startups is above 80 percent across the world. So obviously, they are dealing with public money; it becomes a bit difficult. So uh, what I intend uh, to say is that financial literacy is one aspect that uh, needs to be taken care of because only then the access to credit or those who are who are becoming borrowers will understand as to whether from where and how much credit they, I mean, they can have access to. Just a bit what Mr. Vimal said is that why I refer to Jansamar platform of Government of India is we are looking at democratization of credit. Let me put it very straight. I mean, uh, now most of the banks uh, will have some kind of business ruling here and the branch managers are not taking credit decisions. Most of them have moved, including SBI, all bigger banks. I'm sure Central Bank also will do the same thing, that the branch managers don't take credit decisions, except for some personal credit or something. That also is business rule uh, based in general. So uh, this is one. And uh, I mean, when we move to business rule in general, BRE based credit decisions, the accountability fear in the minds of the officers of the bank goes away, number one. And uh, those kinds of DPS and all also is taken care of because uh, PSB loan in 15 minutes, actually the concept came in 2016-17 and uh, when the government floated it, it was precisely to address this problem uh, that when the borrower applies online, in 59 minutes, it, it goes to four different sites uh, which are very relevant, including the GST, the income tax, and everything, and the bank statements. And it gives sanction online to the customer without referring to the bank. And it actually given in less than 59 minutes to, to any person who applies on that along with his credentials. And then it uh, flows to the bank, and the level of credit or the sanction amount can go up or down depending on the actual need. It goes up basically, yeah, it doesn't go down than that. So we are looking, and RBI also is coming with a platform of platforms, and shortly it will be rolled out. Uh, we, the country will see entirely different view in a couple of weeks or a couple of months uh, because of this uh, entire democratization of trade. Let me tell you, sir, just an update for PMFME. I can tell you right now, I don't have the papers, but I carry it in SBI, whatever PMFME loan applications have been done by the uh, countrymen of all across the country, every single day I know how many are delayed up to 7 days, 15 days, 30 days and we don't allow PMF proposals more than 45 days to exist in the system. The credit decision has to be taken and every bank does it uh, and, and uh, I will respectfully maybe differ with Mr. Y. Uh, I mean uh, we have a large part of exposure to food processing uh, industry. Uh, no, but percentage. Uh, percentage wise, reserve <laughs> is your total exposure. Yes, yes. I mean, I, I is your total yes. exposure. But we still have more than a trillion uh, rupees exposure. Uh, I'm not having <coughs> the exact figures, but I'm too okay. sure about that. Okay. That we have a trillion rupees yeah. or more exposure to food food processing, uh, uh, and, and even in the micro, uh, when I said we do uh, more than 20 to 23 percent of EMFME, Stand Up India, uh, and Mudra. All this majority flows to the food or, or the smaller units. So, uh, all in all, uh, we are looking at democratization and moving out from the branch manager managed or taken decision to a back end BRE based uh, uh, or rule engine based decisions. So, we are actually going to witness 
even further uh, expansion of credit, particularly in the financial inclusion space. I'm not talking about the bigger units, but the smaller ones. Actually, I was not talking about uh, the way it is processed technically. What I was talking about sourcing of credit. Like a person has to approach a branch or a manager when he feels like he will sure he wants bank credit. So when he gets the nod from the banker, you know, as to whether your proposal is credit worthy or not. So at that time, uh, the consent hit because once the manager gives the consent, only then he will uh, go ahead, right? So that was fine. But I also wanted to know that apart from government schemes, uh, in a premier uh, banking organization like SBI or Central Bank, uh, of course I have uh, seen the thrust of banking also undergo change. So uh, banks were not that uh, bent on commercialization or being like a corporate entity uh, as it exists today. So you have uh, uh, banking apps, you have a separate uh, line for capital markets, you have a separate uh, entity for say credit cards. So it, has, uh, it is very diversified now and, uh, and very organized. But uh, what uh, to your mind uh, comes to you when you think of the agricultural sector in India, when you think of the food processing sector in India, how much of um, importance would you give it in your day-to-day -day banking life? Because Within the bank also your portfolios do undergo a change. And if uh, government intervention, uh, keeping the government intervention aside, uh, has the bank, uh, the banking industry uh, been thinking of taking uh, certain positive initiatives on its own to raise awareness and to uh, try to bring in women as well as the very micro entrepreneur within its ambit. Because we do speak of digitization, we do speak of the various schemes, but uh, it has also been my experience that uh, in practical life, it is very difficult. There are many vendors who could not understand what is going on, and even when we travel to far-flung areas, the mobile signals do not work. So you have a lot of practical problems, and uh, literacy is something, again, it's a problem because many people cannot read, write, count. So whether you give them a 100 rupees note or you give them a 500 rupees note, it's all based on trust and faith. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a large part of India, there's a large part of Indians who are still surviving on the margins, who do not come to these convention centers, who don't see, uh, who don't handle smart telephones, who don't see flat, screen televisions. So my question is now more to the banking industry that in terms apart from the tremendous profits and the trust for commercialization, what are your inter internal policies thinking for making a better India without the government schemes and the government interventions? Yes, all yours. Thank you. Uh, yeah, great question. Thank you so much. In fact, I, I was waiting for this question basically. <laughs> Thank you. In fact, I had a vertical of State Bank of India which look af looks after agriculture and uh, all government uh, sector initiative. All in all, the size of my own balance sheet is somewhere around 2.7 trillion rupees plus the government uh, initiatives would be around half trillion. So should be around 3.25, 3.5 trillion is my own balance sheet. Uh, so the government schemes form uh, uh, maybe 45,000, 50,000 crore. The balance sheet of the bank, which actually is towards the farmer or the food processing um, core, is around 2.7 trillion, which I have. This is fine. So all across the country, other than government schemes also, we are completely <coughs> engaged in, in uh, driving this business. Uh, in March, in State Bank, we came up with a specific curated product for this industry called Agri Enterprises. Because we thought that uh, the MSME looks at more of the MSME and manufacturing kind of, 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 uh, of outlook 
and agriculture looks at more on the on the farmer side. So there is a missing piece in between. Uh, so we came up with a product called Agri Enterprise Loan, where in agriculture we fund up to 100 crore rupees. So which means that from minimum one lakh to one crore. And it's a pivotal product and it's doing very well in the last couple of months since when we introduced. And, and uh, let me tell you, ma'am, we, we have, if you see the RBI definition of priority sector, it throws whole light out, uh, I mean, uh, industries in food uh, or food processing, which are conventionally categorized by all the banks under MSME are basically food industries, not the SME industries. And uh, I mean, the RBI definition, if you go, uh, the PSL category 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, with annexure 1, 2, 3, if you read, there will be at least 80 or 90 categories of food processing which are recognized under agriculture, uh, which, which the banks have conventionally been uh, dealing under SME. This year we have done this, and the Agri Enterprise Loan is a product which is actually moving very well uh, across the country. Uh, this is one. Number two, the small sector which you referred across the country who do not have access to mobiles or internet connectivity, I will respond, we have a very big exposure in small self-help groups. Also. And it's again, world's biggest uh, I mean, microfinance system of the world. It started in Bangladesh, but we are the biggest microfinance system of, of these women. And I am amazed the way, despite, I mean, you are aware about the social uh, structure of our country that women are normally, even today, are the uh, standing at, unfortunately, at the end of the benefits. So they have survived, all these rural women, and the size of the, 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 uh, the loans given to these women are not less, sir. My own loan portfolio is 41,000 crores to self-help groups, and all banks taken together should be around, around 1.7 trillion. Hardly any increase. Three, three waves of Corona, these women who are at the end of the benefits of, of Indian family structure have survived and the NPAs in SHGs are not even 2% at industry level. That is the core of women and majority of these self-help groups are, are, are doing dairy, or dairy or agri alike and food basically. So we have introduced one more initiative and I would refer again to Mr. Vimal what he said, is that we have created 30 kinds of BPRs outside SNG for making them enter micro enterprises, standard DPRs. So no more brain is required by the branch manager or the uh, centralized person itself. We identified 30 activities which are done by women across India, particularly the rural and semi-urban India, not the urbanized, and we have formalized the DPRs. We have formalized the, the quantum of loans. So it's are available on your website. Yes. In fact, the name of the initiative is Swayam Siddha. And why we evolved this name? And this was and just this uh, month and 45 days old initiative. Swayam Sahita Sammo Se Bani Hui Mahila Hai, Jho Usme Paak Che Aad Saal Se Kaam Kar Rai Hai, Unki Agar Aashao Ko Pank Dena Hai, To Unko Micro Entrepreneur Banana Padega. Or Micro Entrepreneur Banana Padega, so then we have to take away all the pain points which they are facing. Uh, being less educated, not aware about the balance sheets, not aware about uh, uh, the income tax returns, or the whatever pain points are there, we are removed from those women. Uh, but Shantanuji say that uh, I am a farmer, or uh, say much less I am a housewife who has no income. And I say that I can make uh, aam ka achar and I approach the local bank in my district or in my village and I say that I need say 10,000 or 20,000 rupees and I need to start this business. So would any bank in that district or village be even be willing to even listen to this housewife who goes without any bank? You are yes, yes in State Bank of India. <laughs> you are yes, yes. I mean, uh, I mean, let us understand that there, there will still be 2, 3, 4, 5 percent ignorant people who are not aware about what kind of facilities the banks are offering today. But even for a Janadana account, 10,000 old draft is auto-granted by us. No need to do any application now. 
you you need to have a Janardhan account, and we grant ten thousand rupees overdraft just like that. Unfortunately, awareness is not there at the ground that I have I can do this. So, uh, getting a ten thousand rupees loan is is I don't think there is any challenge. In fact, uh, one needs much more than ten thousand rupees loan today uh, to start. That a, is true. Yes. I was uh, once in a meeting of certain bankers in MSM. So I was told that even banks have a fund to raise the awareness in their neighboring yeah. areas and districts. But the point is, is it actually implemented? Uh, yes. Yes, definitely. In fact, we are engaged with various ministries. Uh, I mean, let me tell you, with the Minister of Agriculture, we are doing clusters, uh, cluster programs in millets, particularly for promotion, which includes a co-partnership between the ministry and uh, Bank of India. At least in six states, we are doing. All the uh, secretaries have been informed, uh, Secretary of Agriculture, and we are doing in six states. In fact, we'd love to do cluster development programs or, or work with food processing industry uh, for developing certain clusters in, in this country. And I don't mind some more vendors joining us. I mean, the, the canvas is so big that there is no in, in, in fact in between us. A lot of market potential is there. So we would love to do some 10 or 15, 20 places cluster development uh, with the Ministry of Food Processing. Definitely, yes, yes. This is, uh, we are having a very positive vibe here and <laughs> I am very pleased because this is the first session I am <laughs> moderating. So, uh, Sanket, you have heard the comments of our uh, colleagues and uh, um, our other speakers. So, what has been your experience or any uh, experience uh, with respect to Typhoon India that you would like to share with respect to financial inclusion or uh, approaching a certain equity? Yes. So, uh, so it was uh, very heartening to uh, hear uh, the amount of loan Shandu ji has disbursed. So on a lighter note, now I know SBI is a big lunch break and what do they do after the lunch break? loans disbursed. But uh, so uh, I will not want to obviously speak about the debt part about it because you know like these are experts sitting here and talking about debt. But as an entrepreneur and in fact who's uh, you know, successfully exited one company and is uh, now running the second company and obviously I have one failed company as well. Obviously nobody talks about the failed ones. Uh, With fails one you learn more. Oh, oh tremendous. <laughs> yeah. So you would learn, you learn every day in entrepreneurship. So uh, in fact, uh, you know for, I mean I see a few young guys at the, at the, on the last row. Uh, so, in fact, uh, you know, while it is a little difficult to get loans from banks for very young startups, there is a lot of equity funding available in the market. You know, it obviously begins with, uh, like they say, FFF, friends, family and fools. Uh, I don't know why, uh, why they've included fools in it. I mean, you know, they are like our earliest believers. So, you know, it, it begins with raising money from within your own ecosystem. Then there is... Now, uh, you know, even that system is maturing. So by the way, even though we're talking about a funding summer today, there is $24 billion of dry powder only in India, be, uh, you know, awaiting to be invested through, you know, the equity route and startups, right? And, uh, you know, it starts with as low as pre-seed funds, which could be as low as you could raise 10 lakh rupees, 25 lakh rupees, uh, you know, going up to angel rounds, which are in a million dollar range, going to pre-CDA, CDA rounds which are in a $3 million whatever range, going to CDB, CDC and then eventually obviously you know uh, like the ultimate dream for the investors and startups is that the startup goes to IPO or there are mergers and acquisitions. So this is one part of the world. Then there is a, a lot that needs to be spoken about incubation and acceleration. So uh, <clears throat> You know, while there are huge companies in our food processing space like the Nestle's and the Haldi Rams of the world, but with growth, like growth comes, uh, you know, I mean, there is a certain amount of slowness that comes in a huge company, right? Because of the hierarchy that's there in the company. There is obviously, you know, the decision making is slow. For some reason, the innovation goes down, which as startups, startups are known to be agile, startups are known to, you know, innovate better. 
So it's very important that you know there is a, a partnership created between big companies and small, where they you know incubate or accelerate such small companies, and you know they eventually fund their innovations, and then some of these companies could become uh, you know acquisition uh, targets for these big companies itself. Like uh, I remember being part of a Sodexo acceleration program back in the day. You know it was it was so helpful for us to understand the whole corporate catering space and all of that. And that is, and you know, it, such kind of things are very important. Now, uh, coming coming back to the whole industry growing. So coming back to the whole industry growing, uh, while we talk about farmers and uh, you know entrepreneurs and you know big companies growing, the whole uh, I mean, you know, how many of you all have heard of Reva? Do you all remember that Reva car, that electric vehicle, which was there like some 15 years ago, and it. It failed badly in India because there was no infrastructure around it. Look at the electric vehicle companies today; they are thriving because there is a whole infrastructure created around e around EV, right? Like the government has come and given tremendous subsidies. There is so many, so much of charging stations created. All of that, you know, why are the tuk-tuks working so well in Kolkata and Chandigarh and all? Because there is an infrastructure, economic infrastructure created around that. I tuk-tuk carry that, I car wo naake pe lagate hain, I chala ke I kama sakta hu. So even even for like like you know like Shanmugam rightly said, India wastes more agriculture than you uh, than Europe even produces. So if we have to do that, we have to do infrastructure. Ko sudarna padega. I mean, when you are funding agri or food processing, you have to fund the infrastructure, you have to fund the supply chain, you have to fund the logistics, you have to fund the warehousing. All of that needs to be funded. And uh, so and you know while we talk about like the chilies, uh, chilies say eventually chili flakes are made. But wo, you know, unfortunately, in India, mein 90 percent of the farmer class has farmland which is less than one acre. Mm. So, usko infrastructure is very difficult. So, you know, I mean, so this is an ugly truth where the farmer will always be at the lowest end of the scale, and uh, corporates or you know entrepreneurs who take that jump will probably you know benefit more from there. And uh, as an entrepreneur, what I've seen is like you know, while the government has come out with like some amazing schemes like CGT, MSC, and all of that, but uh, uh, I think as bankers, you all also have to understand that you know there is a difference between uh, profitability and high growth in the initial days. And if you ask us the same questions that are being asked to a ten-year-old company like in terms of CMA reports and uh, you know, Patsa ka balance sheet, company ek saal junior to Patsa ka balance sheet kaise lagi, you know, by what I mean. So and you know these loans are meant to be given to younger companies. And uh, while uh, Vimalji spoke about 80% startups failing, but if you I think go and see the NPAs, which probably are more than two lakh crores in India, I'm sure 95% of the NPAs must be from the the big guns. So I mean if you continue to fund them, you should obviously continue to fund the startups as well. Like world over, uh, startup failure is respected. And like you know, Vivekji rightly said that you know you learn more from the failures than from the success. Because success sometimes you know makes you complacent, but you know like like the failure actually you know like so shows you the ground reality. Close your remarks with that line, one Absolutely. liner, right? So we learn more from from our failures and. Absolutely. Then we move forward. Absolutely. So I'll remember your example of the river. That is uh, something I will serve also. Just one minute. As so I would now, because we are running out of time now, I'll just request one liners, one to two sentences, bang on from each of our panelists. Okay. So I'll just share one like ray of hope as like sir said the banks are not funding startups. But I think now that like we are an incubator, we have startups. So just today in this uh, World Food India, early uh, after in the, at around 12, I met a representative from Exim Bank and they told me that we and said we want to fund your startups. So they I mean they're saying like okay through you we will have a waiting sort of thing that how you're doing it. So I mean that is uh, one way I think uh, a little step which might you know, open other doors. Thank you so much, Bibanji. Uh, so I want to thank all our panelists for sparing their time, and we have had a very informative session. So, uh, in conclusion, if uh, any of our speakers want to leave the session with one with their one last one liner, yes. I would like to give it over. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Samira, for the uh, wonderful opportunity. Only thing. Uh, uh, 
I will just like to say as yes, somebody had mentioned about intermediation. See, there are there are two big scopes, volcanoes lying in India, which have big scope of intermediation. On the lines of already tested model of SLG, there is one thing is which is known as PACS, Primary Agriculture Credit Facilities. It's a huge scope. A lot of food processing funding can be done through it. Uh, that is uh, another thing is if food processing ministry is really considering on the lines of one district, one product, they have to also come into first of all analyze those products which are related to food. We will push make a standard uh, structure. Otherwise, also identify that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It was really great, as I said earlier. We have a great future as a country, and I'm proud to be an Indian. Uh, for the ministry, I still uh, request while closing that we can, we want to work uh, with you in certain clusters to prove a case and show us as, as, as a model that a cluster can be developed, and we want other stakeholders also to join, like ministry, uh, the other stakeholders who would develop the cluster, and as a bank we would come in, along with maybe some more banks. And we, we develop certain specific clusters and put up a model that this is how a cluster on food can be developed. And then we upscale uh, with the experience of maybe six to eight months or one. Thank uh, you, that sir. I am sure you. that uh, we all would like to follow up on this discussion later and maybe meet again next year. <laughs> and uh, hopefully with uh, the same audience and uh, with few more new faces. Mm -hmm. So now I think I'm running out of time yes, and uh, yes, getting uh, all the signals. Uh, <laughs> it, it was a quite a informative uh, session, especially for me. Uh, I think um, uh, with Sanket sir, has, uh, I'll be able to start a, you know, uh, another scandalous food. I've been trying to start a restaurant for like a 10 yes, years now. Idea, <laughs> idea <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, the second thing is, I, I just want to validate uh, a few pointers here that uh, Mr. Shamnu sir and Mr. Vivek sir pointed out that uh, a lot of startups are uh, coming up in uh, uh, food and agri uh, uh, business, uh, especially in digital market. Uh, there is this uh, startup I know of. Uh, it started in 2019, mm -hmm. and they captured this uh, the the. Um, uh, bottleneck that uh, both uh, the panelists were mentioned and they have become like a 200 crore company as of right now uh, within a span of a couple of years so it's it's just a matter of uh, capturing the bottleneck and again uh, there, there was uh, another um, uh, 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 a guy that I connected with a month back and he was uh, also trying to capture the uh, you know the very basics of uh, food processing uh, he was trying to enter uh, uh, farming in, in mushroom farm. So obviously there is a lot of potential, a lot of uh, young guys see uh, potential in food processing. And with that, I, I'd, uh, I'd like to uh, give my sincere uh, you know, uh, gratitude to all the panelists here. And a big round of applause for Ms. Samira Ma'am for coming to this session. I almost feel like resigning from the present job, <laughs> having a startup for working yeah. in one of yours. Yeah. Right? So thank you all for coming. Uh, I mean, this session didn't have a forum for Q and A, question answers. Because the session, whatever you all spoke, one side there is supply, demand. So we can we can give five minutes to okay, Q and A. It's not sure. over yet. Sure. He's just thanking okay. us. Uh, so we we'll open it to the house. Uh, yeah, just, just, just for a couple of. Minutes. Just for a couple of uh, questions because uh, there will be a, another session uh, starting at uh, just uh, almost. <laughs> yeah. So, in fact, no, I think we should go hard. Yeah. Start. Yeah. Start. Yeah. Start. Yeah. Start. She was instrumental in. No, it's it's just that it's such a mixed opinion that I'm getting. You have demand, there is positivity. At the same time, when the reality check comes and somebody entering this industry, there's a fear factor which is there. Okay, we will enter, go out, get a point, come to a bank, there is this process. It's actually creating a fear philosophy. Demand is there, you have trillion dollar, I mean, you can put the numbers, all of us know that. But where is that positivity coming more so from the government in terms of awareness? 
and it is just not about creating a forum like this. We need more and more information which comes up. Success stories are very, very little. As I mean, Sanket was telling, 80% is the failure. The reason of failure is funds, all of us know. But what, what is the corrective step that we are taking? Um, Madam, I think before speaking, you should please introduce yourself. I'm so sorry. I'm Preeti from Enlight Life. It's uh, I'm Preeti from Enlight Life. It's a startup in nutraceuticals. So we are looking at funding, and that's one of the main reasons I came in here. And I'm more confused than what I was. <laughs> well, uh, it's a dilemma that you are more confused. Uh, then I think we'll have to organize another program very soon I'm for you. I'm more than happy to. Right. But uh, to just uh, one time response is that see, uh, it's not the government's responsibility to uh, to you know provide each and everything to a citizen. The government is a facilitator these days. Uh, the bank, uh, each entity has to survive. So if banking industry has to survive, the government as a body also has to survive. So th when a person decides to be an entrepreneur, uh, the government of India is trying very hard. You should also appreciate that look at the population size we have, look at the diversity we have. We are still, we are not giving up, we are trying. So for an, at an individual level also, when you are interested and passionate in something, you also have to come forward and make some effort you cannot as adults expect that everything will be spoon fed, right? So this this is my remarks at the initial, I'll uh, leave it to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll say what you said, 80% uh, yeah, status feel that they don't feel only in India, it happens across the world. No. And big, I know the major companies say Honda, Toyota, Microsoft, all their products fail. I mean you can't uh, say that we didn't have funds or failure is, you know, market acceptability is a challenge right, from a startup as well as an MNC. I will uh, just take uh, half a minute to respond particularly to you. Uh, we as bankers don't have our own money. Okay. It is somebody else's money. It's the depositor's trust we have. And a, a common question which is asked me all across India is why don't you offer loans at 3%? I said fi absolutely fine. Uh, would you like your fixed deposit rates to be cut down to 1%? And the hall is silent. They wanted 7% or 8%. So if you are want 8% on FDs, the loans will always be at 9, 9.5 or 10%. As simple as that. Because we have an operation cost. Uh, so because we, we borrow money from the depositors in the length and breadth of the country, there are certain policies or processes through which every bank works. What is happening to the startup is, uh, I mean, we, I have done extensive work with uh, startups in agriculture for the last one year. Uh, along with Thai, along with KPMG, along with McKinsey's, along with Indigram Labs, along with NARM Hyderabad, which is a government accelerator, and so on. Uh, various, even in Chennai, we work with uh, one of the NGOs also. What's happening is that in every startup space, the startup has an idea, but you have to have commercial legs to everything. Everything which is self sustainable will only sustain. The idea doesn't sustain by itself. Many big startups which actually started in this country and have got now billions of dollars uh, of valuation started with a very good concept of solving farmers' problems, but with due respect to everyone here, including Sanket, they have actually replaced the traders and they have become the supply chains and they cease to <coughs> solve the problems for the farmers. What was the root of the, their, their initiation? Is it not? So, therefore, every startup idea has to be incubated, and that is why incubation is there. Then they accelerate, then market ready. We held uh, recently, three months back, a session for 36 startups in SBIS training center for two days for making them bank ready. Because the incubators incubate your idea, make you market ready, but nobody makes you bank ready. That is what is required. Thank you. One more question, please. I'm uh, Vignesh from High Office Environment Coffee, Bangalore. There's a question uh, to the banking fraternity as well as uh, the government. Uh, see, basically, we are a seven-year-old company. We are uh, having tie with more than uh, nearly maybe one lakh farmers from <coughs> South India as well as in different parts of the country. I am trying to make my farmers as food processors. What is the difficulty? Don't mistake me. At the grassroots level, I visit all tie two, tie three, and the rural area. I make your branches. It's our bank, it may be. They are finding it difficulty for the farmer to become a food processor. They don't want to see that change, what the Prime Minister wants to bring in. 
branch facing people, branch facing stuff, they still, language is one of the major problems for them. See, as a farmer, I want to go and set up a food processing. Maybe chili flakes, you take somewhere in Andhra, Telangana, it's an easy example, they want to make it. But when it comes to PMFME, again you have a state nodal agency, again the empowerment has to happen, again the process is happening, which the farmer cannot do. See, he is available, there are women entrepreneurs who are ready to do this. But as a banker, whether the government is equally giving that hand-holding support from the government of India, I am talking about Ministry of Food Processing, directly to the entrepreneurs who want to do it. We have done about 700 crore business last year, we are into coffee, so we are now into expanding to different other uh, food processing industries throughout the country. I am also a customer of SBA. So State Bank is always there, the big daddy in the room. But end of the day, we want the government to also support this rural, uh, you know, farmers who are there, who want to become food processors. What is the policy which that can be made available for them as a facilitation part of it? Thank you. Mine is a follow-up question on that one. In fact, uh, nothing related to a personal enterprise. By the way, my name is Santosh and I, I run a couple of NGOs. Specifically, I work in the FPO sector and uh, I sort of mentor and work very closely with them. First of all, sir, I, I agree with you. This PMFA has done extremely well and uh, they have done it in record time. I work so, so very closely with them. So one is that I congratulate, you. I congratulate you all on that, the bankers on that. Sir, I feel, you know, there was a, a suggestion from the side that I worked with the CVC, what do you the pastor? CVB. Sir, so the kind of NGOs who, uh, who are empowered and not, they don't have anything in their head. So I feel, I've seen bankers when uh, uh, in, in the other sectors, when things get into stress, they wear the shoes of that industry. That particular entrepreneur only they were. I, I am I am aware of a very large enterprise, literally a hotel here. The banker used to go and see the hotel being constructed. He was worried whether the hotel will come out or not because so much of money was deployed there. So I feel the especially the FPO is a great uh, intervention which the government has bought in, and there is a huge potential to see how we can uh, look at. Uh, empowering these FPOs, I guess uh, the cluster which you mentioned, no, sir. If there is a sort of a, a seamless uh, this, wherein bankers wear the uh, hat of an entrepreneur and work with the FPOs, because the FPO is one organization probably as a food processing industry with a already very backward integration time. So I feel because our farmers are very good at production. Thanks to the fragmentation which uh, Sanket uh, explained, they don't have time to sit and pro process it. So I feel if the FPO is a director, this, the thing is now, if we bring an integration with the banker, the government, government is, I, I agree with Madam what she said, everything the government cannot do. And there are so many programs which keep coming in, we need to get, get that knowledge. But I feel if you all can look at a product where, you know, uh, some kind of a synergy with the uh, uh, the prospective FPOs, where the banker comes in, the government comes in, it would be a great thing. No, thank you. We will uh, try to record record these uh, comments, uh, and uh, we will try to see what policy responses we can come up with in response to your question about the uh, yeah the coffee thing. Um, See, actually, at, at the moment, uh, many ministries of the government of India, as well as the state government, various commodity boards are also working. Now, the, as we are, you may have uh, heard during this discussion, there is a policy space. There is seems to be a gap, definitely, when you look at the primary producer, who is the farmer, and the end product in the market, and the product which we use. So, filling up this gap is important. So I, uh, I can personally uh, feel that we, sh we will definitely try to uh, put forward uh, this uh, policy intervention to the senior powers to be, that we should try to fill in this gap more. And uh, we have uh, various uh, very uh, good intentioned, meaningful uh, institutions working in this area. And we have various ministries. We have Ministry of Agriculture, we have Ministry of uh, Animal Husbandry, we have Skill Development, we have Food Processing Industry, we have Micro and Medium Enterprises, we have Food Distribution, and uh, on a large uh, scale, the state government is very intimately involved with the particular farmers and the persons working in the field, in the state. 
So uh, from the government side and uh, I think from an institutional side, we need to better better intervene and better coordinate and think out of uh, you know filling in this policy gap. One, one small line I'd like to add now. Uh, this EMFM is only with regard to double on apex uh, you know, One cycle of working capital also can be included for that. That's what the ground level uh, it can be. It can feedback be. is just one cycle. It is just a I am sure right. uh, Shantanu will also agree. Definitely you can uh, put yes. in, uh, we will try to put in uh, in our records. You can also write to us, you can also send a mail to us in sure. response to your attending this yeah, session. Is there is nothing there. Right. What so, uh, and at the same, so I would, uh, now this time is really running out. I have another session uh, coming to converge in another few minutes. In lighter, so, in lighter vein, if yes, you succeed with your effort, this turnover is going to come down. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't increase the farmers. <laughs> uh, so, I, I'm, I'm sorry to, uh, you know, uh, I cut down a lot of, uh, from your introduction, because it will take a lot of time to introduce all of you. Uh, so for this, just, just, just give me a 30 seconds, man. sorry. As far as the FPO is concerned, his, his question is unanswered. The problem with us is, I have done in last one, one and a half years, uh, various garage meetings with FPOs, myself. I have mean, one in Patna, one in Lucknow, uh, Madurai, Bangalore, I did 27, Bhopal, uh, and, and so on. The, the challenge is, there are CBBOs, there are NGOs working in the field. Uh, one is, uh, the the farmer psychology which needs to change is very difficult because they have their own knowledge set and even this rate of these reviews and the CEOs of the FPOs will not be able to change. Number one. <coughs> Number two, 95% of the FPOs are involved and input uh, based. Uh, they are not output. Not output the moment we can convert the FPOs from input based to output focused and make FPOs not a three months economy, 12 months economy, we have the answer. SHGs took 10 or 15 years to settle. I am very sure that FPOs are also going to take some time to mature and our future is coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, just, just for a token, uh, for a This is a small memento from our side. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.